Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm Colin McEwen. In this very special video, we're gonna have a look at the highlights from the past season and some of the great places you can go in Northern Ontario. With over 400,000 lakes and rivers, smallmouth bass, brook trout, Northern Pike, there's so much for anglers. We're gonna highlight some of the places you wanna go. Stay with us. Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. You know, everybody here at the new fly fisher loves fly fishing for brook trout, and Northern Ontario has lots of places to go. Have a look at some of these highlights from the past year. Up first, Dr. Jack Imhoff and I are fishing the Kilpatrick Lake system on the hunt for giant brook trout. We're the guests of Blue Fox Camp, based out of Iron Bridge, Ontario. Jack and I were just about to uh, uh, go through this narrows here and reposition. And as we came in, I don't know, it's six feet, what do we see? Two big blue trout cruising. So I'm gonna go backwards here. And Jack, I want you to cast very shortly back over here because I got a feeling they were trying to get through the narrows. Get him, get him, go! You got him! Oh, you had him! He was on. Strip, strip. He's got it, he's got it! You got him! <laughs> I told you we'd get him. How cool is that? Sight fishing, there was four of them that time. Cruising the edge. So where can you go and sight fish for big brook trout like this? I don't know. The water's so clear here, we can see down eight, 10 feet, even though it's late in the day. And uh, we're seeing them coming up on this edge. It's about, it's six feet against the edge, going up into two. It's all weed. And I just saw a tail. And oh, that's a big fish. It's a big fish, Jack. Oh, got him. Okay. And he missed the first hit. I saw the fish turn and eat it. All right, let's let him go. Okay. Sticking with brook trout, we'd be remiss if we didn't hit the big water where the current world record brook trout was caught. Jeff Parks and Joe Woltis are on the Nipigon River fishing with Affinity Angling and Neil LeDuc. Just the rhythm of these fish too, you're, you're rarely gonna get them to come up twice in the same minute, but we'll just give it three or four minutes here and he might crush one of you again. Sure. Yeah, he's around. Neil is a fan of top water fishing for these brookies, but Joe and yours truly blew every chance we had. Here, John. Ah, oh, fish gone. Too quick at the draw, as they say. We switched over to streamers, and that began our day. So we're just set up on a main lake reef here. There's uh, a lot of deep water surrounding this about four or five foot rock pile on the top here. And uh, when the brookies are feeding, they're generally right up on the top of these rocks. Just a nice constant retrieve. And uh, usually it's five or 10 minutes per spot like this. If they're there, we'll get them. If not, we just keep moving around. You'll notice the current starting to come actually against the wind through here too. Fish on. Yep, yeah, a boy. Little guy, I think. Well, we've had some good chances at them. Lost four, three on dries. 
Looks like we've got one smaller one. Finally, we might be able to get to the net here. It's actually not too bad. It's All right. Got him. Right on. Oh, we're on the board. On the board, boys. On the board. Looks out. This is about an 18 incher. Right on. Nice. Nicely done. Nicely done, gentlemen. Then it was Joe's turn. Nice. All right, buddy. Yeah. That up, boy. Yeah, that was textbook. Bigger, that's a better fish. Nice fish, yeah. Yep. I'll just wait till you get them close, and then uh, whenever you can get a good head left, I'll come in there. And just take your time here, too. It's a really heavy current. Good fish. And you just got to enjoy them, too, because they're pretty nice to fight in here. These Nipigon Brookies are tough as nails. You cannot let your guard down when battling these gems. Yeah, baby. Nice. Nice. Oh. Yeah, that looks like about uh, 21 inch or so. Fly out, barbless. Awesome. Nicely done, buddy. Beautiful brookie. Yep, there we go. Nice, buddy. Yeah, they like to take it nice and shallow. On it. Looks like a nice fish. A lot of people have trouble holding brook trout. Um, I recommend just keeping them in the net if you can in the water. Um, you know, if you really need to get a picture with a lifetime fish, you know, three, four seconds, if it doesn't work, back in the water. Um, some people like to use a tailing glove. I tend to just use my bare hands. But I'm just going to show you one little tweak you can do with your hands to give yourself a little better grip here. Naturally, you want to grab the fish with the side of your hand, and as you pull, he slips right out. But if you just roll your thumb so that the bridge of your thumb is in the middle of his tail, you can get a lot better grip on him. If you just see the middle of my thumb is on his tail, I can just get a little better grip. And then just a little uh, pick up underneath and back in the net. Just for example, all you need is a quick lift, quick photo, right back in the water. And if you fish big brook trout long enough, you're going to hook into a giant. Joe hooks into the fish of a lifetime. He's coming right back out too. Walk the dog right back up here. That one looks uh, even bigger. Feels like largemouth. <laughs> How was the hit on that one? Oh, uh, that was no question that I got hit. I just popped it when I went slack back there, and he came up and just cranked it. Yeah, this one might be pretty big. Well, just sitting in heavy current, fighting that fish. It was dogging down deep, got it up to the boat, boat and just 
fighting it for five plus minutes and it just came unpinned right at the back of the boat. Probably a 26 inch fish. One of the largest fish that uh, Neil said he's ever seen out here. Um, just heart wrenching, but how the, how the day goes sometimes, right? Ah, man. Couldn't have done it. No, I, I'm surprised it stayed on so long. When he came up to the surface, I'm sorry, I had Yeah, I, I was like, oh God. And he just started backing, backing down. The Big Lake, Lake Nipigon, is also well known as a big brook trout fishery. Here, Jeff Parks is with Tyler Dunn of Tyler Dunn Guiding, searching for big specks. So we're here on uh, Lake Nipigon, but we found a, a piece of moving water, and fish love moving water, and we're working with a single hand rod. Uh, we got some quite a lot of turbulence here in front of us, but when you're working with these uh, single hand rod and you're swinging with a single hand rod, what, what you'd like to do is your setup needs to be with a very straight arm and your rod tip down like this, just like this, because what you can do, if you get a hit in this water, you can extend, you can extend your arm up and you're going to get a better hook set compared to if you have your arm here and you're fishing here and if you if you do this you're not going to get much of a uh, a good hook set on some of these these brook trout and these brook trout are really hitting hitting the fly fast and if you're in here at all you're not going to get a great hook set but if you reach out rod tip down as soon as they hit rod tip up that's a good athletic hook set so try that next time when you're swinging with a single hand rod, you'll get a better hook set, especially when these fish in this kind of water are gonna hit it hard and spit it out really fast. Fish on, fish on. Nice. Nice. Beauty. These Lake Nipigon brook trout are full of power. You cannot hurry these fish to the net. Keep a good bend in the rod and have a very soft reel hand as these brookies will test your drag system. <laughs> Whoa, that didn't take long. <laughs> now we just got to bring now her back. Now we got to get her in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So we just stopped off from a little bit of a break from the boat. We've had a couple hits and took once <laughs> one cast with the white muddler and that was a beautiful hit. But we're in some moving water the least <laughs> and you know what they say moving water always holds fish here it comes oh there it goes nice, nice brookie there Let's he is start. buddy Let's see if i can bring him in a little bit nice nice awesome buddy right on pal <laughs> nice fish jeff uh thanks nice nice fish yourself buddy you got you brought us here this is your fish. Okay, we're just going to talk a little bit about the flies that we were using here this week at Lake Nipigon. Probably the best that we were using was this black bunny leech. So anything with a lot of movement, but white, blacks, greens will work on that. A lot of muddler patterns, so bring a lot of muddler patterns. Clousers, we did very well also on some clousers, and some of these clousers you can make in all different colors. This was a nice uh, pattern that was just, just a basic pattern, but if you can make it in oranges, which the oranges were working really well for us, and what you can also bring, because we have seen some rises out here, so always bring a mouse pattern with you. A couple mouse patterns or some gurglers. Gurglers always work well in yellows or darker colors. You also need to bring some, just some big bushy flies, some hexes, any kind of big type of a caddis. And those are the flies that work for us, and those are the flies that I would bring if I were you to, to come here and be successful on Lake Nipigon. So this is the equipment that we were using this week at Lake Nipigon. I was using a seven weight, nine foot rod. You can use an eight weight if you want. I'm more comfortable with uh, tossing a seven weight all day. 
We were using a mid arbor reel. Um, you want to have a mid arbor. You want to have a, a mid arbor more so than a small arbor. These are these fish are not going to run that much, but they're going to bulldog it down. And you need to each turn, you need to pull in quite a bit of line for them. The line that we were using is intermediate sinking line, and that seemed to really work well. These uh, waters right now are they're pretty high, but even when it's a little bit lower, you should have an intermediate sinking line, but also have another reel with you that has a floating line on it in case you need to change it up into some shallower, uh, shallower bays. And also if you're wanting to put on some of the gurglers or some of the mouse patterns or any, uh, any dry fly, you wanna have something that you can just switch, switch right away. And that's what we were using to be successful out here uh, this week. What a difference a day makes. Our trip here had been very successful with our hookup to net ratio, but it was like the fish gods were against us today. Awesome. Ah, oh, it's gone, he's gone. Oh. We had sunshine, clouds and rain. <laughs> I think it's a brook drug, but it's active. We were getting a suntan and wet at the same time, but the net was staying dry. Just want to talk a little bit about the back cast now. I find a lot of people struggle with the back cast and it's because they try to force it. And it's the same cast as they're always doing as they're going back and forth. But when you're doing a back cast, I like to do something called the oops cast. And the oops cast basically is when you go forward with your cast and as you're going back and just before you start going to your forward cast, just almost say to yourself, oops, and let go. And I'll just, I'll just show that here, so start, I'm gonna start my cast off, back and forth, and then here. So there, and oops, and I let that go. So you're, you're not really forcing it, it's the same amount of energy as if you were gonna go forward, but just, just before you start going forward, just let go, and you've already created momentum with that fly line. And therefore, that fly that's gonna follow that rod tip is just going to travel that way and you're going to have a very, very easy back cast. Try that and that may help if you're struggling with, uh, with the back cast. The day was waning and I was eager to find a good fish before we had to head back to the lodge. When you're with a good guide like Tyler, you know that there is one person in the boat who wants you to catch a fish more than anyone else and that is your guide. I know there's days out there where I'll get outfished. I also know there's days out there where the fish will beat me up. But nobody, and I mean nobody, will ever outtry me. And I was giving it all for the team today. Fish on. Oh, that was a nice hit. Ah, you had that fly going really slow. Beauty. Really slow, just in amongst a little bit of a crevice. And it just came out of nowhere, and that's a nice fish. That is, man. Wow, that's, that's a thick fish. Again, that was on that clouser. That was unbelievable. What a beautiful colored up brook trout. This is where it was, this is why you come to Lake Nipicon. I can't even talk. That was my best brook trout to date. That was phenomenal. Further north in the Albany watershed, sits Minamiska Lodge. Mim, as is referred to, has flyout access to virtually untouched brook trout waters. Rob Heal is on one of the tributaries of the Albany in his hunt for big brookies. While the region had suffered abnormally high water in the spring and early summer, it had done a 180 through late July and August, leaving the smaller rivers low, but manageable. We worked our way through some skinny water cherry-picking a couple of fishy-looking runs, 
and eventually arrived at the beat where Alan felt that our best chance of taking some good fish was. And he wasn't wrong. I wasn't sure what to expect of the water that we eventually stopped at, but it had enough going for it that I was eager to get started. There was nothing really descriptive about it other than the deep cut bank on the opposite shore, but it looked to me as if it would hold pre-spawn rookies. And as we were getting near that time, I felt pretty good about it. It wouldn't be long before we knew what we were in for. Fish. Good fish too, good fish. Good fish. I gotta look at him. Oh yeah, that's a nice brook trip. That's a nice fish. Get him on the reel. Gotta love a woolly bugger. That's big fish. So this is kind of what we've been looking for was this, this spring creek coming in to keep the depths cold. This is a big trout. I might have to just wander down here a bit. I don't even know if I can wade out there. But I'm gonna try, that's a big, that's a big brookie. Oh my goodness, this is what we came here for. This is what we came here for. Again, using the sinking tip. And uh, we're gonna fairly slow. I wasn't, I wasn't crazy aggressive with it. Just about, just about pickled. Come on, darling, come on. Stay with me. There we go. Oh my goodness. Looks I'm gonna tell you, it does not get better than that. The fishing eventually slowed, but rather than make a drastic change, I decided to simply change the streamer. Joe's Panther is a very old pattern that was introduced to my father back in the 60s and remains his favorite brook trout pattern. I've caught fish on it from Argentina to Labrador and on every brook trout stream that I've ever fished in between. It only made sense to try it here. Yep, it works. It works. Ooh, this is a colorful fish. This is a colorful fish. Ooh, yeah, that's it. Keep coming up here. Stay out of there. This is a colorful fish. Really pretty. This is probably a male. He's very bright. He's fighting hard too. We pushed it to the end and managed to play and land a few more fish, but the time got the best of us and we had to call it. Now I've had my share of good brook trout fishing, but this was unique in that I knew this stream was virtually untouched by anglers, or any humans for that matter. Nothing makes you want to return to a place like thinking you left something on the table, like in this case, hitting it during a good hatch. I can only imagine what that would hold. As much as we love brook trout here at the New Fly Fisher, we crave the explosive takes from smallmouth bass. Bill Spicer is at Branches Seen River in Northwest Ontario, fishing for smallies throughout the water column. Allowing it to sink. We've been marking them at 15 feet. 
So I'm thinking about there. The fact that we got sonar is just so valuable to a man that's out in a lake and trying to find structure. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> that's gotta be a bass. It's gotta be. Please let it be. For a great white shark. Yes. Jaws. Okay. Turn that off. Let's see what we got. I can see something coming up. Uh, that's my first fly. It hit the, the orange. And we just marked, wow. We just marked a fish. Wow. I think that's probably on the, the on, on the sonar. And this, this feels like a good fish. I think I'm gonna get him on the reel. We're fishing a hump, and what, what we're doing basically is finding the fish, and I'm trying to get down to as far as they are, and drifting over them, and just twitching as much as I, to make, oh, oh. Well, don't stab at it. There we go. Oh yes, it's a good bass. And he hit my orange woolly bugger. Barbless. There you go, that's that's 18 inches. I think, eh? Yeah. Man, that was more like it. We searched and searched and searched. We found a lot of small fish. Uh, I had a chance at some big ones earlier. That was a really good fish in anybody's mind. It wasn't a 20 incher, but it was 17 inches. Good solid 17. I got it on an orange bugger. Now, why I picked orange is uh, uh, Quint told me that one of his favorite lures when he was fishing around here was an orange rapella. So I thought, well, I'll throw an orange woolly bugger on. And I got a full sink line on and I had to be down at least 15 feet because that's where the fish were. Uh, you, this time of year, you have to get down and dirty. I got her down and I was trying to touch the bottom if I could. And just twitch, 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 and finally it wham, it hit. And uh, there was no doubt about it when it did hit. Wow. One of the more unique ways to target smallmouth bass is in moving water. River bass, no matter their size, are strong fighters through and through. Here, Jenna McEwen is with Jeff Jackson from Algonquin Fly Fishing, looking to rope a few river fish. Sometimes, they're a challenge to hook and also keep on the line. I, my, uh, <laughs> I, I set that, you saw me. It was on I the line. I set that hook. It was on the line. Uh, come on. Oh, they're right there. Oh, they're all over it. Oh, oh. Uh. Okay, go up. You're going up. That's good. No strip though. Okay. okay so cut the strip out. So just like set it, rod yeah, set it. That's okay. right. Just like bunk, brakes on, set up. Let them have it, right? You're not trying to let it take it away from them. Right. Back off. Like that? Oh, that's a big guy. Oh no! Ah. Oh my! <laughs> I pulled up. Oh my goodness! <laughs> they are awesome. just that everywhere awesome. here, and they are hungry. I'm gonna get the hang of it. Okay, there you go. So, in that, what did I do wrong there? Mm. Just. I don't think you do anything wrong. Bad it's super friend. Oh, it's super frantic and fast, right? So, yeah. they're moving fast, and you're moving fast. There's a lot of them. That Holy one came out while he's in the air, so that's yeah. the way that goes, right? Okay. Jumping, it's a gamble. What happens? Who knows? So now you see there's this little current coming in the side. Yeah. So where that current comes in and hits the eddy line over there, it's really swirly again. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing we're doing on the other side. It's going to be kind of tight, bouncy fishing, but tight little location. You can cast all around this swirly water and 
pull the line through it. Yeah, that, there's that foam. There's the other side with the foam, all this stuff in here. And same thing, the fish will be in close quarters and just kind of turn what? right there. Oh, and turn back. Oh, you on? Oh, nice. Ah. So close. Up, up, Jenna. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, you got him. You got him. Good for you. <sighs> Swear, if you jump off, Mr. Fish. Oh, this is a nice bass. Okay, 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 and... Oh, yeah, good one. Oh, oh where is he? You got him. Oh, <gasps> nice fish. Nice Finally. fish. <laughs> nice. Finally. <laughs> Hold up. After all that hard work. Man, this is fun, though. Uh, almost missing them and like having to work for it a little bit almost makes it yeah, like yeah 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 I feel very sure. rewarded. But that was fast, right? Oh, it's like it's instant like instant hit. Yeah. Two strips and yep. they're after it. Yeah. So I mean, I guess they they have to be aggressive. Everything exactly. moves so fast. Yeah, here. it's so fast in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's that's why it's so so stressful fishing is because everything's moving so yeah, fast. Oh man, my heart is like pumping. <laughs> awesome. Northeastern Ontario is home to some giant smallmouth bass. Mark Melnick is a guest of Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge and finds great success targeting early season smallies. Oh, there's a fish. Picked it up. Nice fish, too. So we abandoned the, uh, the Rocky Point theory and moved over to structure on shoreline. So what we've got is a beaver dam to our right and then a bunch of logs and rocks and overhanging cedar trees. I pitched one underneath this cedar tree, let it sit for a minute, gave it a twitch. This good bass came out and decided he would play long. Took the Scotty's McFly, the bottom fly, Slow and steady, right? That's the key. On tough days, slow things down. Smally in the hole. There's a fish. Oh, nice one. Good fish. Good bass. This one took the Scotty's McFly. So the pattern for these fish are rocky shorelines on islands that have the wind blowing into them. That's where these fish are coming from. All, all of them today have come from that spot that same structure, and we haven't been able to pull much off of anything else. So the fish will tell you what, where they are and what they're looking for. And it's, you know, the, the flies hit the water, they're weighted, they sink, and on your first move, there's weight. That's, that's exactly what's going on. So they're keying in, coming over, sucking it up, and away you go. Oh, no. Come on, buddy, out from under there. No, 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 no. Come on. Get out from under there. All right, fine, you can go that way. I just don't want to get you caught on the engine. Just hooked in the corner of the mouth. Good small love. Nice. Well, the slow day has picked up. <laughs> Best fish of the trip. 
How do you like that? Awesome smallmouth. Scotty's McFly right in the corner. That's what it's all about. And who can forget about Northern Pike? Mikey Metcalf and Rob Voisin are guests of Marmac Lodge on the make for Big Northerns. Oh, there we go. Nice. We're on our way to the next spot. Oh, <laughs> that's a nice fish. Andre passes this bay and says, we can't pass it without fishing it. So always listen to your guide. It's a nice fish. Give us another bust. Gonna turn and go one more time. Ready? Ready to come home? Good it's call, nice, Andre. Come nice here. Nice fish, Mikey. <laughs> That's a good call coming here. That black Always and orange. Always listen to your guide. That black and orange delivers all week. Oh, nice. It's a nice fish. It's thick. That's a thick fish, man. That's a thick fish. Late in the afternoon, you just pick up the speed of these retrievals because they're starting to get aggressive. Oh yeah, nice take. Nice take, Rob. That Beautiful. was on a speed retrieval, Mike. Good retrieval. call, man. Hey, can you check my line under your foot? Thank you. Super fast retrieve, Rob? Yeah, super fast retrieval, and it smashed it. Good call, Mikey, you just said that. I just switched to a fast retrieval in a spot I had just cast it a few times, so that moved the fish, no doubt about it. Man, I love these pike. They just come like barracudas out of nowhere, like missiles. Boom, beautiful. Cooperated too. Very nice, very nice. Oh, Whoa. oh, 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 Andre oh, with the skills. Hey, shortstop. Nicely done, sir. <clears throat> very nice fish. Well, I hope you enjoyed these highlights from the past season. It really reflects some of the great fishing that Northern Ontario offers anglers. No matter whether you want to catch brook trout, smallmouth bass, northern pike, and much more, Northern Ontario has a lot to offer. If you want to learn more about the show and places to go in Northern Ontario, go to our website, thenewflyfisher.com. Hope to see you on the water. Thanks for watching. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,